Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this new video. This time I want to go over how to transfer files from a Windows computer to a Kali Linux computer using SMB. Now let's uh, go over this over simplified network diagram that I have here where I have two computers. And let's say that on the left side, this is going to be a Windows computer, right? And on this side, I'm going to have my Kali Linux computer. So there may be a situation that you would like to uh, download files into your Kali Linux or create a shared drive so you can transfer files between Kali and any other device over SMB. So uh, natively, Kali does not have the SMB server enabled as Windows does, uh, but uh, you can either download it and configure it, or configure it, I should say, that way, or you could use one of the many tools that are going to be able to provide SMB server functionality just for that instance. And in that case, that's going to be one of the many tools that you can use is Impact, um, Impact SMB Server. So let me come over to the uh, uh, background window that I have. And as you could see, uh, these are tools I don't really remember if they come pre-installed with the latest version of Kali. Uh, but if they don't, you can just download them and install them. And when you do, you're going to be installing a lot of uh, the in-packet uh, Python scripts. And it just so happens that this one that we're going to be demonstrating today is a Python script that is going to allow you to run a SMB server. But in the future, we're going to be talking about other scripts that you can use for different functions. And there's a whole bunch of them. You can go through the list. I believe there are like 30 or 40 different scripts you can use. But um, so going back to our transfer file, so let me go back here and use the writing functionality of this tool. So again, in this case, we have a Windows machine and we have a Kali machine on this side. And we would like to set up a share on Kali. And that share is going to be accessed over SMB. So as you would like to set up a folder and make that folder available so computers that you control or that you want are going to be able to connect to that share folder to either download or upload information to it. And that's obviously one of the easiest ways that you're going to be able to transfer files. So what do we need here? What you need, number one, you need Impact SMB server running on this Kali computer, and that's what we're going to do. And we're going to do, um, we're going to review some of the information that you need because when you're working with SMB, uh, SMB has different versions. I believe there's SMB 1, 2, and 3. SMB 1 I think is enabled on Windows 7, but maybe not Windows 10, but Windows 10 supports stuff for backwards compatibility. And then depending on the version of SMB that you're using, you may require SMB signing. And belie I believe that goes with SMB 2. If you want to be super secure, maybe you want to enable SMB 3. So there's a whole bunch of uh, things that go into SMB that when you want to do something like this, you, you, you want to keep in mind. That's all I'm saying. I'm not going to go deep into how SMB works, to be honest with you. I know the basic, uh, I would say more than the basics about SMB because I've been studying the protocol for some time, but I don't know the ins and outs of SMB. So what I can tell you, though, is that you would like to have similar versions of SMB. And not only that, it may be that you are having a version of Windows operating system that has a policy applied that it won't allow you to connect to a less secure type of SMB server. 
So when that happens, you may have some issues connecting, and we're going to go over a couple of things so you have an idea. So now that we have this uh, basic uh, network diagram, oh, one more thing that I want to mention here. All these is going to be on the same network I have, even though I have a firewall here. Um, physically, these devices are connected through the firewall. There are no firewall rules, and it's all within the same uh, segment, the same uh, network class that I'm going to be using. Uh, if you have a firewall in between and the firewall is blocking or filtering SMB, you may run into some issues. This is all on the same network and logically, even though physically the connection is different, logically it's going to look like this. We're going to be connecting from one computer to the other. So let me uh, come over to... Um, my Kali machine, oh, <laughs> let me erase this in clear. So on my Kali machine, as you can see, I am running Impact, Impacted version 0.12.0, the one that is a long name. And this is um, the latest release as of the time of this video. So if you do Impacted SMB server, you're going to be prompted with some of the options that you can use when configuring SMB uh, server on this. And this is what I'm going to invite you to pay attention to. And let me go back to uh, the PEM. Uh, number one is SMB support. Even though it says that SMB2 is experimental, as you can see right here, you may have to enable that option because if you don't, depending on the client computer that you are connecting from, you may not be able to connect because that client computer may not have support for SMB1. So even though it says experimental, it is a good uh, practice to run it when you want to set up impacted on your Kali machine so you can have a broader spectrum of computers that the that your Kali machine is going to be able to support in this case over SMB. Uh, the other thing continuing on that topic is that depending on the SMB version that the clients are going to be connecting from and depending on the security policy, and in this case, I'm specifically referring to Microsoft Windows. Um, I don't know about Macs. Depending on the policy that is applied to those uh, computers, they may prevent you, or in this case, the client, from connector unauthenticated to an SMB shared. So in that case, you may have to enable or use the username and password functionality when you are setting up your SMB server on your Kali machine. And lastly, obviously you would like to, you know, like pay attention to what interface you're going to be using. Like I don't usually depend, don't pay attention to this. If you have multiple interfaces on your computer and you only would like one interface to provide SMB services, then you will specify that. If you don't, then just leave it as a default, and it's going to, uh, all interfaces are going to listen for SMB communications. And the last thing I want to mention is that you can configure the port to something else. The default SMB port is 445. But if you're going to be listening to a different port, make sure that you specify that on your client computers to connect to a different port over uh, SMB. And uh, last thing that I didn't mention is that it also offers the ability to use the hashes instead of the credentials, the username and password. So I'm going to start the SMB server. Let me just clear this.
So here's the uh, syntax that I'm going to be using uh, for uh, to enable in package SMB server and let's go over the syntax real quick to make sure we're all on the same note uh, because I am gonna be running SMB server on my Kali computer I, I, I need to do it with higher privileges that's why I'm running sudo and then this is the name of the script that I want to use which is in package SMB server and in this case, this is the name of the share that client computers are going to see or connect to. This name could be anything you would like to use. I just so happens to use share. And then in this case, I have the home folder where I am pointing to. And this is just the path. So remember, when you are sharing something over SMB, basically you're just making some files or folders available from your computer out to the network. And this is the name and you have to point to the physical location of that shared drive. In this case, I am pointing to this specific folder, but you could point it anywhere as long as you know where you're pointing to. And I'm supporting, as I mentioned to you, SMB2 support because I'm going to be connecting from devices that do not have SMB1 enabled. And I'm using uh, a switch D for debug. So when I hit enter, I'm going to see more information. But you may not be able to see much information, to be honest with you. I've been running that switch D for some time and haven't seen anything that provides more information. So I'm going to type in my password to enable this. And as you could see, it is running now. So, oh, something that I forgot to do. Let me check the IP address of this computer. Uh, so I am running 172.168.170-15. So if I go to one of my client computers, and in this case I'm going to be using Windows, so let me bring my Windows computer up, and I try to connect, I'm going to go 172.16.15, as you could see, you're going to see the share name that I specified that I want to share, right? So if I go back to this, you're going to see that the con connection has been successful. I connected as admin and I authenticated successfully. So if I go back to my Windows computer and I opened this, I should be able to copy and paste information to that shared folder and as you could see you could see that information going over here now let me uh, stop this for one second and interrupt this and I am going to reconnect or I'm going to re-enable this but I'm not going to offer SMB support so as you could see I started the uh, service one more time and I'm going to go to my Windows machine and let me uh, refresh and as you could see it's giving me an error message that I do not have permissions and this is just a, gener a generic error message. And if we do, um, uh, let's see, let me bring up Wireshark. Now let me, uh, so if I do uh, Wireshark uh, just to capture the traffic and I try to connect one more time. All right, let me, uh, Pause this and I'm gonna go.
SMB follow TCP stream. So you see the uh, TCP handshake right here, and the system is trying to use just SMB one for the prop uh, for the request, and that connection is getting rejected by my uh, server. Right? They they couldn't agree on SMB. So let me uh, do this one more time, and it is interesting because you could see the logs right here. It says coming connection, then the connection is terminated. But if I do the uh, SMB2 support and I go back to my computer, let me uh, do this one more time, continue without saving, and I attempt to connect one more time. As you could see, I'm connected, so let me pause this and let me do a filter on the SMB traffic. Oh no. So here we are uh, that as you could see the system is defaulting to using SMB2 because Windows in this case I'm running Windows 10 uh, or 11 I forget I believe it's Windows 10 on this Windows computer but uh, forget about the version or the year of the operating system because even when you have Windows 10, Microsoft pushes out patches and releases that even if it's Windows 10, you know, that you have like the 1000 or something, that may have that policy or that setting that is going to prevent uh, the system from using SMB1. And so these are the things that you have to keep in mind when uh, enabling SMB on your Kali machine when you are uh, providing services to uh, Windows because Mac is different. I believe that Mac has SMB 1 and 2 enabled and it can force backwards because it doesn't have any policies. So that's going to be a different story. So I hope that this video was informative and useful to you. Again, this is one of the many ways that you could use SMB to transfer files between Windows and Kali. And if you found this information useful, why don't you consider clicking on the like button, subscribing to my channel, and leaving a new, a nice comment out there. Hey, why not? You know, that's good karma. I'll talk to you on the next video.